Tweed Sea Trout at Sea. Now Tweed Sea Trout have long been known to be rather different from other sea trout on the Scottish East Coast. For a start they're much larger, both in average size and in the sizes they can reach. And they are, it has been noticed, much more like those of the Northumbrian and Yorkshire rivers to the south than they are to the rivers of the north. And this has been seen for a long time. Back in 1930, Herbert Now pointed out that the Tweed sea trout do form a well-marked local race and that they were very similar to the sea trout of the Northumbrian rivers, such as the coquette of the Alm, both in the rapidity of sea growth, the size they can reach, in habit and in appearance. Now his view was that the tweed, the coquette and the alm fish produce races of sea trout which are similar to one another but dissimilar to those of the Scottish East Coast because their local conditions are similar. And we can see what that means with some very simple modern data from the FishPal websites just by recording the largest sea trout reported each day to these websites, we can see there's a very marked difference. The D and the T usually have a largest sea trout of 2 to 3 pounds, but the Tweed and the Northumberland Tyne, their largest sea trout is 4, 5, 6 pounds, with occasional ones much larger. So even with information as simple as that, we can see this marked difference between the Northumberland rivers and the East Coast Scottish rivers. And of course, in the Northumberland rivers, sea trout can get to very much larger sizes than in the Scottish East Coast rivers. This is the largest sea trout ever recorded from the Tweed at just over 28 pounds. But this difference isn't just in the maximum sizes, it's also in the average sizes. And again, this is very simple data. This is simply the average weight of fish, of sea trout, caught in the nets along the UK East Coast. And we've got data going back to the 1950s. And you can see in every decade, it's the same sort of pattern. Sea trout get bigger from north to south along the east coast. We also have some tweet data from netting records which shows that there is a, appears to be some long term trends in the seasonality of tweed sea trout runs. You can see from this graph that back in the 1840s and 1850s most of the sea trout taken in the nets were caught from July to September. They only a relatively small proportion in February to June. But over the years this has changed. The later fish have got less common, the earlier fish have got more common. And just recently, relatively recently, in the 1980s and 90s, the proportions actually changed over. And it became that more fish were caught in February and June and fewer in July and September. Now the marine migration of Tweed sea trout is again more like those of the Northumberland and Yorkshire rivers to the south than those of the Scottish rivers to the north. Now the best researched river on the east coast of Scotland is that of the North Esk. And when the movements of sea trout smolts tagged and recaptured or are examined. You can see that the pattern is really one of recaptures equally to the north and south of the North Esk, with just the occasional stray, one for instance over Norway, sometimes they come down onto the Northumberland coast. But by and large, those recaptures of the tagged smolts are local to the North Esk. Now in the 1950s there was a large smoke tagging program on the Tweed 
run by the then Department of Agriculture and Fisheries for Scotland. And from the results of this, we can see that where tweed sea trout go is very different. They're got on the Northumberland coast, the Yorkshire coast, a lot recaptured East Anglia, the Dutch and the Frisian Islands, and the Jutland coast, and of course back in the Tweed. And that's a completely different pattern from the North Esk recaptures. At the same time this large scale smoke tagging was being done in the Tweed, MAF were doing the same on the River Coquit in Northumberland. And again it's clear that almost all recaptures are to the south, to the east, and a lot of them are very long distance ones. And as there were almost 40,000 fish tagged in this program, there were recaptures not just from the same year of the as the the fish were tagged, but also from the one and two years after tagging. Now, so many recaptures were made of this 1950s tagging that we can get something, see something of the timings of the movement of sea trout. It takes about 30 days for them to get down to Yorkshire about 70 days to get to East Anglia. After about 100 days they're on the Dutch and Frisian coasts. And then there is a noticeable gap. And then after 400 days or so they're back on the Northumberland coast. Obviously getting ready to come back up the Tweed. However there's also some fish that are still out at sea even 550 days after tagging. And they are right up on the Jutland coast and they are clearly going to stay out longer. These ones are going to be the one sea winter fish, they, which is most of what tweed sea trout are. Now that gap from 100 to 400 days when there were no recaptures suggests that they were away from the coast and therefore away from the netting stations for that period of 100 to 400 days. And that suggests that they actually come back across the middle of the North Sea rather than returning back around the coast. Now these ones here are obviously not going to come back till after two sea winters. And that's of particular interest because the very large maiden fish that are characteristic of the tweed are two sea winter fish of 10 to 12, 20 pounds. And that suggests that it's that area in northern Jutland that these very large tweed sea trout go to. Now we've had some new style information on the movements of smolts at sea from the acoustic tracking that was done here a couple of years ago. Now that was really to look at the success of smoke migration down the Tweed itself. But a couple of the smokes were recorded leaving the estuary and then re-recorded at the Tees Barrage, where an entirely separate program of acoustic tracking was being undertaken. So we can see that, for instance, smoke number 220 left the Tweed Estuary at 0925 hours on the 10th of May and reached the Tees Barrage at 2342 hours on the 24th of May. That's 14 days from Tweed to Tees. Smoke number 255, which was released right up at Philip Hawk in the Ettrick, it left the Estuary at 2007 hours on the 9th of May and reach the Tees Barrage at 10.13 hours on the 27th May. So that's 16 days tweed to Tees. Now we can look at the direct distance along the coast from the Tweed Estuary to the Tees, and that's 141 kilometres. So we can sort of estimate a minimum speed of around 2.48 kilometres an hour and 3.33 kilometres an hour for these fish. Obviously, if they took a less direct route, 
they will have to travel at faster speeds. And we also have to remember that the Tees Barrage is about 20 kilometers up river. So these aren't just the coastal travel speeds, but they're indicative and useful to see. Now it's not just smolts, sea trout smolts that have been tagged in the tweed. Sea trout kelts have been tagged in the tweed since the 1850s. And there's a certain amount of data now available from the recaptures of fish tagged as kelts. And an interesting pattern can be seen. The kelts that were tagged in the river in March and April and May and can be called late kelts are recaptured not that far away from the Tweed. But kelts tagged in December and January, which you can call early kelts, they are recaptured in July and August and they are still far away. And that suggests perhaps that the long migration is made by the earlier running component of the sea trout population. That's to say the sea trout that come back earlier, spawn earlier and therefore kelt earlier as compared to the late kelts look as if they may come from the sea trout component that comes later in the summer, spawns later and therefore kelts later and doesn't make, it would appear, such a long migration. And if we look at the late kelts that I tagged in the estuary in the 1990s, we can try and work out something about their migrations. So they are still kelts, still in the river, still kelts in April and March. They're coming back into the river in July and August, even in June, so they're only two to four months away. So you have to think, well, how far can a fish go in two to four months? They're away for 90, 100 days. We know from the smolt tagging that it takes about 70 days for a smolt, a much smaller fish, to get to East Anglia. So at a smolt rate of progress, to get to East Anglia there and back would be about 130 days. Now that does suggest that these late kelts are not making the very longest migrations, perhaps only as far as East Anglia, and they are not the ones that are going the long route to the Frisian Islands and to Jutland. Now we're still getting tagging and recapture data. When we tag the sea trout in the summer and the autumn at Paxton, we're actually looking to get data on the angling exploitation rate, uh, which is to say we want to find out how many of the tagged fish are getting caught upriver by anglers. But obviously some of these survive and they go back to sea and they get caught at sea. We've had returns taken from a couple of the drift nets off the Northumberland coast. We've had one caught by an angler fly fishing in the sea Mackerel and Filey Bay and we have had one caught on the island of Silt on the Danish-German border by a German who was netting for place. And what was interesting to me about this is that within 24 hours he had managed to find me on the internet and report his capture. And that shows that the internet can actually make this old, very old method of tagging much more efficient. One of the problems with tagging has always been uh, to get people to report their recaptures of tagged fish. Now the internet is extremely easy. And that is what it's all about. And what it does look like is that these very large tweed sea trout are the ones that perhaps go all the way to the mouth of the Baltic.